Hey guys, welcome to this ba- this week's battle of Axis and Allies War at Sea, War in the Pacific. So once again, we're going to try to get the time down. So uh, at least if I do one that is shorter, you guys can let me know if you like it or if you prefer the longer ones. So we're going to get right into this. We have everything set up. The vessels and ships are on the table. In this scenario, the Americans really have it tough for them because basically what has happened is Japan's repeated victories in the Pacific has now allowed them to establish a foothold on this island. And as you can see, they have a gun emplacement on that island that they are now going to use to protect the waters. Essentially, the gun emplacement acts like a battleship, an immovable battleship where it will have a gunnery of basically 12 dice at zero range. It can go up to three and roll eight dice. It has an armor of five, a vital armor of 11, and it has four hall points. Uh, it is considered a, you know, a main gun. It has extended range four, which means as long as it's not damaged, it can attack out to four hexes uh, using its range three values. Uh, they did not get the airstrip in the last game, but in this game, the Americans' objective is simple. They must destroy the Japanese island fortification. If they destroy it by turn six, they win 100 VPs and a partial victory. They also, if they can destroy the island and preserve at least half of their fleet, they've got each side has 100 points, meaning if the Americans can get out of this with 50 points, they will get a total victory and get 150 VPs. The Japanese objective is obviously to prevent the destruction of the fortification, and they'll get 100 by turn 6. And it also is to, uh, if they can destroy 75% of the American fleet, they will win 150 VPs. Now, to show you what everybody has, which you will be seeing later in the game, but to kind of give you a quick recap, uh, the Japanese have brought the carrier Shoho, which can only carry one flight, interestingly enough. Uh, and I'm debating whether to use those flight rules or not. I mean, I think they're kind of suspect, other than the fact that there's a points involved uh, because of a limited collection and this was made kind of a blind draw it's kind of unfair uh, I think every carrier should at least be able to hold two flights and so I think I'm going to play with that rule in this game that if it says one it's two uh, and three will just still be three because otherwise you you will almost never be able to get any other other carriers so in this game every carrier will hold two be able to hold two flights which is going to be important for both sides the japanese have bought a lot of planes other than the bat other than the cruiser miyoto which is going to kind of be their guns combined with the guns from the island they are going to be sending out mostly planes after planes they have a betty which is a bomber patrol bomber so that means it can it can come out once even without a uh, carrier support you have the Zeeks which are your fighters because they're going to try to fight off any American bombers that try to bomb the island and then they have some Kates some Judy's and some Val's all of which are intended to destroy the American carriers and the American ships now I brought one ship that has a unique uh, special ability called the Laughly which was called the ship that wouldn't die there was actually two of them commissioned during the war one was destroyed and then they built another one but the Laughly cannot be destroyed with bombs, which means she must be destroyed with guns, which would either be the guns from the island or the guns from the cruiser. But she cannot be destroyed with bombs from airplanes. So that is actually kind of a cool little thing, which is why the U.S. brought it. The U.S. also have employed the assistance of the USS Hood. Again, they are saving their major assets for a major battle. Uh, so they have asked the British to uh, send the hood over, which it was on its way and it has arrived. And they are bringing another St. Lowe aircraft carrier. The last one was destroyed, but uh, they had one left before they had to spend any of their uh, VPs to get it. And then the U.S. is bringing some planes. On that, they have the Wildcat, which I'll probably add another one of these flights. 
And then they brought basically two dedicated bombers, the Helldiver and the Dauntless, both of which bring 10 and 11 bomb payloads. So they can they can whittle down this structure quickly. The U.S. unlike the last game where the U.S. kind of got distracted attacking ships and never destroyed all of the transports, which they probably could have done quite easily and not have allowed this fortification to exist. This turn they are going to stay focused on their main task. There is a new commander of the fleets. Admiral Merrill has been replaced, and Admiral Nimitz is now commanding the fleets in the Pacific. And Admiral Nimitz is determined to get a victory out of the Pacific. The Japanese also have a sub, which is an I-26. It can begin wherever it wants. If it does, however, it cannot attack in the first phase of the game. But it is sitting here kind of off the coast waiting to uh, plunge in on the American forces and maybe do some damage as well. So with that out of the way, we will get started and I will start turn one. Okay, so the first turn is underway. The uh, Japanese won initiative. They have a plus one for the uh, Miyoko, which you can see here, that little flag with the one. Uh, the Americans get plus two for the hood, which you can see there, the flag with the two right here in the corner. Uh, but the Japanese won the rolls, and plus the Japanese still have a plus one from having won the very first game. So as long as whoever gets the last victory gets that plus one on the initiative. So the Japanese still have that from having won the last game. The Americans kind of moved up a little here. Not a lot of movement. You got the Laffy and the Hood moving up to get in range of the uh, island fortification. The... Uh, Japanese I-26 move, but it cannot fire in the first turn. It cannot attack, even though it has one, two, three. It does have torpedoes that can go range three, but they can't use them now. Uh, neither one of these are getting attacked. The Americans have sent their Dauntless and their Hell Divers after the guns immediately, to which the Japanese has responded with the Zeeks. Now, this emplacement has no anti-aircraft. They may be able to bring that in future games if they can transport more material here and then maybe even get a land strip or something on this one, airstrip. But right now, that has no anti-aircraft guns, so they are using both their Zeeks to fight off those bombers. Uh, the Japanese, on the other hand, sent a torpedo plane after the Laffy because it can't be destroyed with bombs. Then they have the Judys and the Vals that are uh, bombing the Hood to which the Americans have responded with a flight of Wildcats to fight them off. There is a Betty going in unmolested with, uh, I believe the Betty has torpedoes as well. Uh, yeah, torpedoes against to try to torpedo the St. Lowe and take out the American carriers. So the Japanese's uh, theory is to just use their air power and basically end this fight very quickly. The Americans, on the other hand, have tried to be bring a balanced force, uh, but their main goal, obviously, is just to take out those guns, even if they, they wind up losing some material. So we are going to get ready to make some rolls. Okay, so the Americans have rolled their initial air defenses. The Laffy was not able to abort uh, the attacks. I think those are uh, some Kates, so they will be coming in. Uh, with torpedoes. The battleship Hood was not able to abort the attack of, I believe those are the Vals. Uh, so they are going to be dropping bombs. But the uh, Wildcats were able to not only abort the attack of the Judies, but they destroyed them. Two, four, six, seven, eight hits. So that is the first time we've seen that with the American dice, and that is a good sign. We're going to roll for the uh, carrier now. It has to try to abort the Bettys. It only rolls five anti-air dice, and the Betty has an armor of... Let's move these out the way. The Betty has an armor of... Is it four or five? So they need four to abort her. Let's see what this looks like. Two, three. Oh, one short. 
they got the two with the six and another one with a five. And that was all they were able to do. So that attack will come through. Now we will check the uh, the uh, Zeeks that are trying to defend off the Americans. Uh, the first Zeke gets seven anti-aircraft dice. And I think it has... One has advanced fighter. It says it rolls one extra dice when making any air attacks against fighters. If it's the first tournament of the game, this unit rolls one extra die when attacking. So it's going to actually get two extra dice. One of them. Well, let me see which one that is. Okay, so these are both Zeeks, but these are A65M uh, Zeeks, which are the advanced fighters who are going after the hell divers. They have eight dice. Now, the Hell Divers actually, I think, have a special ability uh, as well, which says light defense of armament. Whenever an enemy fighter attacks this unit during the air defense phase, this unit gets plus one armor this turn. So, the Hell Divers armor will go from five to six. Wow, and I don't think the Zeeks did anything. They got one, two, three hits. That will not abort the Hell Divers. The other Zeeks are going to go in, and they have these are the M2s. They do not have uh, surprise, they have combat air control, which there's no carrier. Same sector as a friendly bomber. They don't have that. Surprise. If it's the first turn, they get one attack. So, uh, they have seven dice. They will go to eight. Two, four, six, eight. So, actually, I think the other one should have had nine. Because he would have had seven plus one. Oh, no, that would have only been against fighters. Okay. And so, this one actually has two... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, so that will be enough to destroy the Dauntless. It will go down. So each side has taken out some planes this turn. So that will be enough to destroy the Dauntless. Uh, wow, that was a heck of a row. So now that all of the air defenses have been rolled, we are now going to go in with the air attacks. And the Americans will be rolling first. And the only thing they have right now going in on air attack are these Hell Divers that have 11 dice. So we have 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. So, and the guns have a regular armor. The regular armor on these guns is not heavy. I mean, they were kind of shoddily constructed the vital armor though because they're dug into the mountains like that is 11 but the regular armor is only five so let's see what the uh, hell divers do I don't see too much in here they have two four five six seven so they have seven which will be enough to damage the guns uh, which will de definitely take away its extended long range but it's not enough to destroy the vital armor which is 11 but that is not bad for the Americans I mean that's probably average which is what we have not gotten lately so we have another uh, so now we will get ready to do the Japanese attacks okay and so we have the results of the Japanese air attacks this one was ro rolling three torpedoes at the Lafley. Didn't hit with any. You needed sixes. This one was sending two torpedoes in against the St. Lowe. Again, didn't hit. It needed sixes. Now, this one, the Vals, actually had a darn good bombing run. They did two, three, four, five, six, seven. But the armor on the USS Hood is actually eight. The vital armor is 13. So those bombs just bounced off of the hood. Did no damage. 
So that was an amazing turn for the Americans to one, be able to survive it, to two, take the first damage onto the fortification. We will now move into the uh, surface attack phase. I don't think anybody's in range of surface attacks yet. The only one that might have extended range is the hood, which has one, two, three, four. So I think the, the hood might have, if it has extended range, uh, Four, it might be able to make an attack. Let's see. So it does have extended range four. It says it can make range four main gunnery attacks using its range three attack value. That is 12 dice. So it will be able to target. Uh, I think they're going to target the carrier because these planes are really annoying. And uh, I think they want to see what they can do to get this carrier out of action as soon as possible. To limit the flight that the Japanese will be able to send out. Three, six, nine, twelve. And these are the guns, the mighty guns of the hood. Let's see if it has any other special. Well, it has a fatal flaw which says if at any time a battleship rolls four sixes against it, it's automatically destroyed. Whoa! Wow! I think they just blew the friggin' Shoho out of the water. The hood just blew it out of the water. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> what some guns! What a major blast of guns! So that is enough to destroy the Shoho. Its vital armor is only six. Wow, it just rocked it with one salvo of its blows and that may have been a key key crippling of the Japanese defense of this island and these guns because uh, they are not going to be able to bring out all those planes again next turn this was a vital turn for the Japanese their plan was to overwhelm the Americans or the Allies with air power and just sink and destroy and cripple stuff right in turn one and then basically either leave the Americans crippled out of range or to bring their guns to bear as they crawled into range and they would just take withering fire. That we see is not to be. So I don't know if anyone else has enough range. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So everyone else is four away. One, two, three, four. Let's see if the Miyoko has extended range four. No, it has long range torpedoes, but none of that. So, and I don't even think the Shoho has anything else it can do. So, I think that is going to end the uh, surface attack phase. It is going to end turn one. Why does this say turn five? There we go. So, it is going to end turn one, and we will get ready for turn two. We're making pretty good time. Okay, so turn two has begun. The Americans won the initiative, which was really important because it forced the Japanese to move first. The Japanese tried to close with their I-26 sub, and they also tried to close to bring the guns of the uh, Miyoko into range. However, the Americans were then able to counter by bringing the Laffy, which is uh, anti-submarine warfare, into the hex with the sub by pulling the aircraft carrier and the hood out of range of the sub uh the japanese countered in the air phase by the betty which used its excellent endurance to remove its rearming counter the americans countered by sending in their wildcats and the hell divers are going in unmolested on the guns so the row air defense the japanese are first this turn so they will get to roll their air defense against the Americans. But unfortunately, they don't have any air defense. None of their Zeeks are out this time. They're all being rearmed. And the, uh, I don't think that's the only one they have being attacked. So the Americans can then roll their air defense. You have the Laffy here, which has, I think, five dice. Uh, no, six dice for air defense has heavy anti-air but that only increases the range 
So it is trying to fight off the Betty. And it has one, two hits. Some of these look better than they are. So it didn't fight it off. The Wildcats can now roll their air, air defense. <clears throat> and the Wildcats get, let's see. They get seven dice. And the Bombers, it's not in there with a carrier anymore. So it will just get its seven dice. Four, five, six, seven. But I think it needs four to send the Betty on its way. So I see two, three, haul oh, right here. Four. Just made it. Just made it. And I think that's enough. The Betty's vital armor is four. So that is enough to uh, abort the Betty. So the Americans have been doing an excellent job with those Wildcats of keeping the uh, keeping the Japanese flights at bay, aborting them. So that is that is that is going to also be huge because now it would allow the uh, Americans to bring their anti-submarine warfare to bear on the Japanese I-26. We now will roll for the Hell Divers. They have 11 dice, but they're going to get an extra die because they are attacking a damaged target. So that will give them 12 dice. They are dropping bombs. These are not torpedoes, as you may have seen in the previous game. And that looks like a real good roll. So we definitely did some more damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh! One more damage and it would have hit the vital armor. Can you see that? Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We have two, four, six, oh, okay. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh! They were one one damage away from hitting the vital armor. And they would have destroyed it in turn two. Instead, it, the gun will take another damage marker. And I think that will end the air phase. So we will begin the surface phase of uh, turn two. The I think the uh, the guns are still out of range. They're not crippled because they have a... a they have a haul of four. They can't do the extended range anymore, which means they can go one, two, three. So uh, there's nothing in range for them. The Miyoko, I think, is the sole item that can do a surface attack this turn. It can attack the hood at a range of one, two. Let's see what guns it can bring to bear, what special abilities. So it rolls nine dice for his main gun at two it can even go three and probably attack the uh aircraft carrier it may just let loose on the aircraft carrier it has long lance torpedoes which has a range of two or three so this it can do some damage i mean the americans will get to fire back but this thing is is very well equipped to do some damage so one, two, three, it can do its torpedoes there or it can do its torpedoes here. It would fire one. Here it go one, two, it would roll two torpedoes. So I think it's going to do that. It's going to send some torpedoes there. Uh, and then I will check this though because I want to make sure I'm doing this right whether he can do the torpedoes now. Its main guns, it's going to put its main guns on the uh, hood and it's going to put its secondary guns well they, they don't they can't reach this is one two three so it's going to put its main guns on the aircraft carrier at three that would give it seven dice because I don't think it's going to damage the hood with those nine and it will put its torpedoes on the hood so let me look this up and just see uh, whether the torpedoes get rolled in this phase or the next. Okay, we are back to the surface attack phase of turn two. I did clarify, in the surface attack, you can attack with your torpedoes and your guns. 
or your gunnery, or you can attack with your anti-submarine warfare. So if you do any submarine warfare, though, you can't also use your gun. So in this instance, the Laffy could not attack the sub and then use its guns to try to attack the Miyoko. It has to choose. So it, it is going to do any submarine fare on the sub. This here is attacking this, so it can fire its torpedoes at one of them, and it can fire its guns at the other. So let's roll for the torpedo attack. The Miyoko gets two torpedoes at range two, needing sixes. Now the hood does have, I think, uh, I don't know if they have a torpedo belt. Probably not, it doesn't say it. Oh, nothing, nothing, that was great. So now it will be rolling seven dice at the aircraft carrier, which does not have a heavy armor. I mean, I think the St. Lowe's armor is only uh, two. And his vital armor is seven. Whoo, that does not look good. Two, three, four, five, six. Whoo, whoo, I thought that was a straight up kill. But instead, he has damaged the, uh, he has damaged the St. Lowe. And so that might, that might, might be significant later, although it is not a critical damage. We are now going to roll the anti-submarine warfare attack for the uh, Lafi, and this is important because otherwise the sub will get an attack next turn, which obviously it will attack the Lafi, which is sitting right there in the text. It has five, five depth charges, and it needed sixes on the well depth charges. No, I don't. They're not torpedoes. So the depth charges he did one, two, three, four damage. What what is the uh, thing on the the vital armor on this is seven, so that will do one damage to the sub, but it will not destroy it because it has a hull point of two, but it will cripple it because when you have one hull left, you are crippled. And that will take effect now because the torpedo phase is a separate phase of the game. Or the submarine attack phase, I believe, is a separate phase of the game. Okay, the allies will now do their surface attack. I think the hood is out of range of the installation, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he's well out of range of that. But he's not out of range of the Miyoko. One, two, three. So at range three, the hood has... His main guns, which roll 12 dice. His secondary guns, which roll 4 dice. So, he is going to roll... Let's do the secondary guns first, which is only 4 dice. I think the Miyoko has an armor of 4. Whoa. 2, 3. Almost, but not quite. Now we will do the main guns, which roll 12 dice. The Miyoko has a vital armor of nine. So probably won't destroy it. We don't know. Probably will. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. Oh my goodness. I love the USS Hood. I love the British. The British know how to make a battleship, don't they? Wow. So the hood has destroyed the Miyoko. The hood has destroyed the Miyoko. It's destroyed. It destroyed the aircraft carrier. I think was at the Shoho. And I can put this on now because it's already had its turn. So wow. Wow. The Americans have had a good turn. So we are going to go to the submarine attack phase. And see how that will affect the uh, the uh, I-26. Okay, we are back with the torpedo phase of turn two. Or the submarine attack phase. I had to check and see with the critical. You do lose a die for your torpedo attack. But it says you suffer a minus one. But it's a minus one on gunnery, anti-air, or uh, 
anti-submarine warfare attacks. Most subs won't have those types of attacks. But it's not a minus one on your torpedo attack because otherwise you could never hit because a six is always needed. So, and a six will always do the same damage. So, the I-26, is it, is going to do an attack on the Lafi. And it did hit with a torpedo. It did hit with a torpedo. So, that would be two damage that got through. And the Lafi only has two haul points. So, she is going to go down. So that was unfortunate. That's why I wanted to be very sure I worked it out right. She got she got torpedoed trying to uh sink the uh trying to sink the uh submarine. So the Lafi has been sunk with a torpedo shot. And I think that is going to be it. We will do the air return phase and the end of turn. And I will be back. Okay, turn three has begun, and somehow the Japanese still won the initiative, which was very huge. The Americans or the Allies had to move first, and they're kind of swinging around this coastline. The guns of the hood are now in range of the emplacements, uh, but as you can see, the Japanese have sent two torpedo uh, dive bombers after the hood. So... It might not be here at the end of this turn. It does not have a torpedo belt. They also have sent a regular bomber after the St. Low. So this is going to be crucial for the Japanese because the next turn, none of their air would be able to come out. And the only thing else they have that is not air is this submarine. Although I will say the Americans, I don't know if they have any more any submarine assets on the table now that the Lafi has been destroyed. Uh... Because I don't think any of the uh, any of the uh, planes have any submarine warfare on it, so this submarine is going to be able to chase these ships around, uh, depending on who gets the initiative or not. So it is not over for the Japanese by a long shot. The Americans, once again, their objective is in sight, but it is not guaranteed. The Japanese have sent two fighter squadrons after these hell divers to fight them off. So that concludes the sub, I mean the sea movement. It includes the air deployments, and now we will begin with the air defenses. So the first one we're going to do is the Saint Low, which is trying to fight off uh, these fights. I think that is a Val, and it has armor of five. So this is not going to be easy for the Saint Low. She's going to need some lucky rolls, and she doesn't get anything. So that is going to come through. Next, the USS Hood has seven dice, and it is going to try to abort, or uh, abort, I should say. It is going to try to abort one of these flights. Uh, let's see which one it wants to try to abort. There's, they're both coming in with torpedoes. Looks like the Kate has three torpedoes, so we will try to abort the Kate. It needs five to do that. Well, it's close. Two, four, five. So she did abort the Kate, which means, you know, depending on what happens with the other one, they may it may be able to survive this turn and at least get its guns off. Uh, because they're hoping this turn to be able to destroy the emplacement. Although for the Americans to have a total victory... They also need to get at least half of their uh, half of their fleet out of here. You know, half of the points in their fleet out of here. Uh, now let me check and see. Now the Kate does not have uh, press the attack, so it's nothing she can do about that. Uh, we will go over here now. The Jap, the Americans' anti defense is going to be in way of their Wildcats. And let's see what their special ability is. So they have seven anti-air. They have combat, air patrol, no, escort. If this unit is in the same sector as a friendly bomber, enemy fighters get minus one on each attack die when making anti-air attacks against that bomber. So that's going to be huge. So the first thing it is attacking is the advanced fighters, the uh, A6M5Z, which have six armor. 
and it was not enough. They only have three, so they were not able to abort them with the six armor. Uh, but they will still suffer a minus one because he's in there with the uh, flight. So I think that is all of the anti-air. And we will be coming back with the actual air attacks. Matter of fact, let's just stay here. So if we do this one here, these valves have a payload of eight bombs that they are dropping on the St. Lowe. And the St. Lowe's armor is very low. I mean, it only has an armor rating of two, a vital armor of seven. So they definitely got through the armor. Two, four, five, six. Did not get seven. So that will put another damage on the St. Lowe, which has three hall points and will now be crippled. Uh, well, technically, it'll be crippled at the end of this turn, but I don't think it's going to be able to do anything anyway. Uh, that's going to make a difference. But it looks like it will survive this turn at least. So if the Americans can, you know, get all of their assets out of here and, you know, kind of win this game by turn six and still have 50% of their assets, they could get a total victory. Although that's probably not likely. Even if they destroy the guns, the plane, most of the planes won't be back out in turn four. But they will be back out in turn five. So the Americans would have to survive one more turn. I don't know what they have to do that. Uh, anyway, I think the Japanese won this turn. So the Americans actually should have rolled their air attacks first. So we are going to roll for the Hell Divers that get 12 dice. Because they get 11. Plus they are attacking and injured. Uh, oh wait, I forgot to roll the anti-air for the Zeeks. Yeah, I should have did that first. So let's do the first Zeke's first, the six A6M2s. Uh, they don't have to surprise anymore. Their escort wouldn't apply. Uh, so none of that applies. They have seven anti-air dice. They are suffering minus one because of the escort in there. And the armor on the Hell Divers actually get, they get a plus one against fighters. So these all become, uh, well I think sixes are still two hits. So that would be four hits. Because even with the minus one, they always say sixes are still two hits. But that's only four and their armor is six. The, the uh, A65Ms have advanced fighter when a, against other fighters, so that won't help them. Surprise won't help them. Great agility. And that didn't come into play. So they have seven dice as well. They will be suffering minus one, and the Hell Divers are still six. So this is four. This becomes a four, which would be five. But that is not enough to abort the Hell Divers because they are at six against enemy fighters. So now we will roll their 12 dice. They are going to drop this payload. Hopefully this will finally finish off this gun emplacement. So we have one roll in there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine so once again we do not bust the vital armor but we do put it down to three it now has three damage and it is now crippled or it will be crippled at the end of this turn uh i don't know if it's in range to hit anything so i say at the end of this turn Okay, so we are back. We are still in the air attack phase of part three. The Japanese are now going to press their attack against the USS Hood. The Betty has two torpedoes. So we will roll for those first. 
two wands, nothing. And the Kate has three torpedoes, which this is the one that scares me. One hit. One hit. I told you that was the one that scared me. So that is two pieces of damage to the hood. It has a haul of five. But it does not have anything that subtracts damage from torpedo attacks. So it is not crippled. But it does have two damage on it. I think that is all of the air attacks. So now we will go to... We will move into the uh, surface attack phase. Okay, the only unit that can make a surface attack is the hood. It has 12 dice, extended range 3. Now, it won't be able to do this next turn because uh, it's extended range 4. Because it will be damaged. You can only do the extended as long as you're not damaged. And it is going to attack the emplacements. Uh... But really, that's really the only thing it can attack. So let's see. The emplacement has been lucky so far. One, two, three, four, five. They only got five in there. So that was not great. But the armor on it is five. So that means it will take another point of damage. That will bring its damage to four, which I think is enough to destroy it. It only has four hall points. So, yes, that will actually destroy it. Now, before it goes, does it get a shot? One, two, three, four. The hood is out of range. It does not get to fire. They have silenced the guns. The, the allies have a partial victory. The question now is how much of their stuff can they get out of here intact in order to turn this into a total victory? All right, we'll be back. Okay, so we are in the submarine attack phase of turn three. And the only submarine attack that we have to resolve is going to be the I-26 at a very long range shot. Uh, it has one torpedo. No. Whew, and that was close. Because that would, I think that would have sunk the hood if that torpedo had gotten through well it would have come close to sinking the hood it would have crippled it okay we go to turn four most of the japanese aircraft are rearming which is basically all they can do this turn is rearm uh the americans have tried to split up their forces because they do not have any anti-submarine warfare luckily the sub is crippled but basically that doesn't really affect it because it would slow down its movement but it always can move one so it has decided to close on the st low at a range of one two three and it is going to try to torpedo the st low again or torpedo it uh, that's all it can do right now the americans basically have to try to survive for turn six in order to see how much of they can get off of here, whether they can get a total victory. So I'm going to roll for its uh, range 3 attack. Now I am going to see if the range gets decreased when it is crippled, because that might be a big thing. Okay, so the range doesn't get decreased. They roll one less die, but they can always roll a minimum of one. So um, unless this sub is right in the same hex as any of these other uh, allied ships it will always roll one torpedo attack but you know the axis always seem to roll sixes when they need them let's see what they do and as i told you there goes another six <laughs> there goes another six so that is going to destroy the saint low it was already crippled it probably would have been destroyed by planes in turn five but at least the uh, Japanese would have had to divert some planes to it. Now, uh, the hood is going to have to try to survive a virtual uh, kamikaze assault of aircraft in order to get out of here. I think the Americans can still uh, get a total victory if they have 50 points remaining. Because if not, then they can't get a total victory. It's really no sense in playing anymore. The hood is 48 points by itself. 
and then you have the plane. So basically, turn five is going to determine whether or not uh, the Americans get a partial or total victory, or the Allies, I should say. So finally, the Allies win the initiative, which really doesn't make a big difference in this game. These planes actually have to return to land this turn since their carrier was destroyed, which means they are going to have to spend the turn rearming, which is another bad thing of losing the carrier. The planes have to now, that all those planes have to spend the turn rearming, which means they wouldn't be able to come back out until turn six. Uh, the Japanese have all of their planes that can come out this time. And they all have one target in mind. Uh, I don't think the Zeeks, they can do strafing runs. And the max they can get in there is four. So, so we have come to the conclusion of the game in turn five. So as you can see, the Hood made a valiant last stand. And after taking attacks from the Japanese Vals and the Japanese Kates, it is still standing. The uh, Zeeks did a couple of strafing runs, but they didn't work. The Val fired three torpedoes. They all missed. Well, not the Val. The Kate did. The Val dropped eight bombs, uh, but was only able to do four or five hits, which was not enough to penetrate the Hood's armor. So with that, turn six and the uh, Japanese planes having to rearm, there would basically be no way that the... Uh, the Japanese could defeat the Americans in this scenario. I mean, actually, I think they have one plane, which is this Betty, that could come out. But, of course, the Americans would have their planes and their cover coming out. But let's just see, because the Betty does have torpedoes. So if these all go back and rearm, we will move him too. Because we don't want him to get within range of this crippled uh, sub that is still crawling along since the Americans have no anti-sub. The Japanese could send out the Betty and if she gets aborted then that would be the end of the game. The Americans can send out their Wildcats now which are back uh, after having to rearm in the last turn so let's see if I can find my wildcats so you got the Annie air from the hood which is seven dice which has not been effective but these Bettys are a little less armored they're only four not five like some of the others so let's see so that's two three and four and that would be enough to abort the Betty so that would have been the last shot that uh, the Japanese would have had is with this Betty and it has been aborted it has been flown off the map and that secures the Americans a total victory 48 points from the hood another seven from the fighters and another 14 from the bombers. 63 out of 100 points survived and they succeeded in destroying the Japanese fortification, earning them 150 VPs and actually putting them ahead and giving them the initiative going forward. All right, take care everybody. God bless. Hey guys, I just wanted to give you guys some closing thoughts on, on the game. Uh, I think next week I will probably switch to another uh, battle report or playthrough, but I wanted to give you guys some thoughts on the game. I will probably continue this campaign probably off uh, off camera. I will, you know, I will probably upload it, but I will probably just stick them on the Patreon for anybody that's interested because they're a little long to put on the channel. Uh, but I will let you guys know on the channel how the campaign progressed and who ultimately prevailed. But some thoughts on the game is I really like this system and it really forces you to choose when you are building these fleets between heavy guns like your battleships and your cruisers, between air power, between carriers or land, between submarines 
in any submarine warfare. And it is not easy because if you spend points on one, you cannot spend them on the other. So in this case, the Japanese had a very viable strategy of just to swarm the Americans with air power. But the Americans, I think, brought just enough anti-air to dampen the effect of that power. And when the, the aircraft carrier Shohu was sunk, that pretty much ruined the Japanese hopes of winning the game with their air power. I think if the Shohu had stayed around, it might have been a very different game or it might have been a very close game. I think the Americans would have got the partial victory just because they were able to keep hammering that island with the Hell Divers. And uh, sooner or later, they were going to blow up the emplacement. So they would have got a partial victory either way. But they might have lost a lot more material in the process. But then again, even at the end of the game, with this sub crippled as it was, there was nothing the Americans could do because they lost their anti-submarine warfare uh, planes, which were the, uh, the Dauntlesses very early in the game. Uh, and I don't even know if the Dauntlesses have any submarine warfare. So that was a risk the Americans took. The only thing I think they had any sub was the Laffy, which was destroyed by the torpedoes after it attempted to destroy the I-26. Uh, but I really like the balance of the game and the choice. There's no one unit that is so powerful that it is invulnerable. If you bring battleships, they are terrified of torpedoes. If you bring planes, on the other hand, they have to have somewhere to land. And if, if they are constantly rearming, you know, they're just not going to be there. And this is very historically accurate where in a, a battle like Midway, you know, it was who could get those planes back up and out quicker, you know, that would take an advantage. Uh, I will say the planes are probably the most... Uh, have the most survivability in the game shooting down a plane is pretty rare uh aborting them is even kind of rare but the planes can be costly some of your better planes can run you 10 or 13 points so you know if you're playing a 100 point game and you bring two 13 point squadrons that's 26 points or 26 percent of your force is in planes that may not get in into play there's also a rule that when a carrier goes down, you're supposed to roll a die for all the planes to see if one of them is destroyed. I don't play that because I think if you're going to play land-based uh, landings, then they should be allowed to land. And I don't think you should, you know, blow them up if the carrier is sunk while they're still in air. If they're on the carrier, then I would probably do that, which is why I made a point of getting mine off of the carrier to St. Lowe when it was crippled even though they had nowhere to really go. I just flew them off. Uh, as far as the rules go, they're real easy to learn and, 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 and get a hold of, and I really like them. They're definitely not as realistic, quote-unquote, as a game like Victory at Sea, but you could not play a game with this many units and vehicles and stuff going on this quickly with victory at sea it's just you're just not going to be able to do that i will probably try it nonetheless but i i just i just don't know if you would be able to play it because you have to do the damage control and you roll to remove damage and i haven't even got into the uh air rules and submarine rules for victory at sea but uh just having said that i think that's just my thoughts on the game i really like the game the only thing I, I negative thing I would have to say about it right now still is the variability of being able to get the unit you want and you would you would historically have. I have no large American aircraft carriers and that that really bothers me. Uh, I have several American battleships. I have a lot of Japanese battleships and even some of the Japanese carriers and that's basically what you need if you can get you know at least three battleships and three of the larger carriers then the rest of the stuff you can kind of fill out one way or the other. Uh, but it is a great game. Great game. It's a good game. Hopefully, I think I might be able to find some cards. And then when uh, Warlord game comes out with their victory at sea, I will see if any of those ships are compatible. I'm not sure what the scale is. I've tried to access an ally ships, like whether they would fit if you painted them up, but they're too small. 
So I think these are 1,800. I think the Axis and Allies are closer to 1,2400. But I hope you guys have been enjoying these. And uh, maybe I will play the last game, you know, kind of when the campaign is, is at the last stage, the last major engagement. I will play that out for you guys. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.